Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our second example of how to do a line integral using vector fields. Now we have a force field defined in three dimensions, x, y, and z. So we have x, y in the i direction, plus y, z in the j direction, plus z, x in the k direction. It's probably not a realistic vector field, but it's a good exercise. So it, it is a good demonstration of how to use this technique. Now we're going to integrate through that vector field over a curve that is a twisted cubic defined by x being equal to t, y being equal to t squared, and z equal to t cubed. As t goes from 0 to 1, so we're going to use the parametric variable. And if we illustrate that here, you can see that it starts from the origin, it kind of curls up and goes to the point 1, 1, 1 in terms of t. So when z is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, and x is equal to 1, you can see that t, t squared, and t cubed will be the same value. So that's the kind of the curve along which we're going to integrate through this vector field defined by that. Now the position vector in terms of x, y, and z will be defined as follows, x in the i direction plus y in the j direction plus z in the k direction, but then if we define it with the parent parameterized variable t, it becomes ti plus t squared j plus t cubed k because of the translation we have here. And then if we take the derivative of the position vector, then we get i plus 2tj plus 3t squared k. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the work done, which is defined as follows. The work done is equal to the line integral of the force vector defined in terms of the param parameterized variable t dotted, that's the dot product, with the derivative of the position vector in terms of t times dt. Now, if we're going to define it as such, we're going to also need to define the force or the force field or the vector field in terms of t. So we're going to have to replace every x and y by what x and y are equal to. So since x is equal to t and y is equal to t squared, this becomes t cubed. So f as a function of the param parameterized variable t is going to be equal to t cubed in the i direction. Now y times z, that would be t squared times t cubed, which is plus t to the fifth in the j direction, and z times x would be t to the fourth in the k direction. So now we're going to use those ways of illustrating the force vector and the position vector in terms of t in our integral. So the work done will be equal to the integral. Now the limits of integration are going to be the limits for the variable t from 0 to 1. The force field is going to be defined as follows. So that would be t cubed in the i direction plus t to the fifth in the j direction plus t to the fourth in the k direction. And then we have the dot product with the derivative of the position vector, which is right here. So it becomes 1 in the i direction plus 2t in the j direction plus 3t squared in the k direction. Of course, we still need our dt there. And now when we're multiplying two vectors together via the dot product, we simply multiply the i components together, the j components together, and the k components together. So the work done is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1. And of course, now it becomes a scalar. It's no longer vector quantity. t cubed plus t to the fifth times 2t, which is 2t to the sixth. And t to the fourth times this would be plus 3t to the sixth times dt. And now we see that these are the same terms, so then we can add them together, or at least have the same basis, t to the sixth. So this is equal to, from zero to one, of t cubed plus two plus three, that would be five t to the sixth times dt. And now we can go ahead and integrate those, and that's fairly easy to integrate. So the work done becomes equal to t to the fourth divided by four plus 5t to the 7th divided by 7, evaluated from 0 to 1. You can see when you plug in the lower limit, you don't get anything. When you plug in the upper limit, you get 1 fourth plus 5 
sevenths. And the common denominator, that would be, uh, well, looks like 28. So this is equal to uh, 7 over 28 plus 20 over 28. And this is equal to 27 over 28, which, let's not lose track of what we're trying to do, which is the work done when we move through a vector field defined by this equation right here. Of course, when we convert that to the, the parameterized variable t, then we move through it, through this, what we call the twisted cubic, defined by these variables right there. And then when we plug that into our equation, we multiply the vector field in terms of t with the derivative of the position vector in terms of t, then we multiply that together, we integrate, and we get the work done moving through the vector field along that path. And that's how we do line integrals through vector fields. That's how it's done.